Live and direct, put it in perspective. It's your boy B Mad. And this is Raimundo Telemundo. There's a million and one podcast with a million and one stories. And everyone wants to be heard. But at the end of the day, we got something to say. We're here to give you our perspective on sports, hip hop, finance, and whatever the hell else is going on in life. We reflect and we put it in perspective. Oh shit, live and direct. Whatever. Live and direct. Put it in perspective. What's tonight? What's the Monday night? Night after Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there, all the old earths, all the mamas, umis, abuelitas, tias, tts, all that. We here, baby. What's good? <laughs> Ray, what up, man? Yo, first of all, man. You know we do this from Santo Domingo, from Miami, to Panama, and back to Nueva York. Yes, sir. I'm doing good, man. We had a nice little DMX podcast last time. Yes. I think my boy told me not to reference that. My man, man, shout out to Matt, man. That's my dude. He actually what listened to our show, critiqued it. He critiqued it. He was like, yo, stop referencing your old podcast. I'm like, I don't think that's a bad idea. Anyway, I love him. That's my dude. That's my when dude. did you, you reference the old podcast? I just did right now. I said we just did a DMX podcast. <laughs> this thing is crazy. Oh no, nah, I thought you was. I'm, I'm bugging. I'm tired. I, I'm drinking coffee here, so forgive me. <laughs> hey, people. <laughs> anyway, man, you um, we did have some plans special tonight, but um, you know things happen. Life happens. Um, we're gonna um save that for another time. Um, I don't want to give it away yet. It's very uh, it's, it'd have been a, it'd have been a very ill episode, especially the climate right now. We're going into the um, the NBA playoffs, so we're gonna save that one for reserve. But you know, me and Ray, we're just kicking it tonight. Um, I think we're gonna chop it up about a few topics. We ain't gonna go cr- go crazy. Um, I know. Um, uh, I always want to do an episode like just explaining how we got here, bro. Like you know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying we we worked we worked hard <laughs> to to get to this point, and this has not been easy to put this podcast together. Um, you know, I'm just speaking from my perspective. I, I'm I'm quite sure you feel the same way. You know, it's been a long time coming. I mean, it's still early, but it feels like we've been doing this for a minute now. What do you think? The podcast? Yeah. It, 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 I don't know. It, it, it feels like it's been longer than what it, what it has been. No one is not really, but it feels like that to me. I know I'm st- I still get like, I used to get nervous, a little nervous. Yeah, me, yeah, like, me too. Like, the record button comes on and it's, and the more you do it, you know, it's just like anything else in life. The more you do it, the more um, I get used to it, but it's still, it's going, I don't, it does feel longer than three months. Yeah, damn. It's, hey. it's only hey. three months, three or four months now. Three months. We had it to four months in a couple of weeks, or maybe wow. next week. Yeah, I know the middle of middle yeah of January. Yeah, we definitely. Yeah, a lot more Nets talk before and Knicks talk, and then now it's just like, nigga, that's too many. That's <laughs> that's too many. <laughs> yo, listen. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yo, we were really wilding out, man. When, like we first did this, but you know what? Yeah, we 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 were trying to cover every damn Nets game, and it was working. But it just personal, you know, family wise, like just schedule wise, work wise, it just was not gonna work. We couldn't do that long, <laughs> a long time coming. I mean, I can see if you know, just situations a little different, but nah, as is, it was no way. And then we got our feet wet. Like yes. we learned, look all the banner stuff. All the stuff yes. how we got, you know, everything, all these banners, like our names is on here. I could put, you know, uh the, this banner we getting when we getting started, you know. See? I, I didn't know how to do that before and just and now that you know we interviewed uh, Chris and Eddie. Yeah. Uh for Christina and I go cop that. I think it's yeah, available yep. it's everywhere yet, or just Amazon and Audible or Amazon. Um, I, I believe uh I think in the next few weeks it's going to be, I think by June it's going to be everywhere. It's June. The Christ- yeah. the store- Bars Christ- and Noble. And Bars and Noble is going to be available everywhere. As of right now, it's in uh, Amazon and and Kindle, so the Amazon products. Yep. So interviewing them, you know, 
getting all these bandits together and and like getting the shakes out of like you still feel like you have to say something because the microphone's on and everything like you know you don't want to sound stupid but to be, to be right. honest that's the best thing to do the best thing to that's where we are right now like i was going to talk to uh i was going to say it earlier but this is like where chat rooms were before you could put up to 10 people it's a stream yard they don't give us no yep. money for this uh we're working on our, our two buddy link that's coming up next yo shout out to dorian dorian 82 dorian 82 He's the reason why I, I'm, I put on to a lot of stuff with this. The, I got on. I was skeptical about Two Buddy, but then he popped yeah. up out of nowhere and started talking about it. Yeah, and, I've seen the video. Yeah, and and I'm just like, all right. If he said, because his he seems real at the end of the day. He's very aggressive, <laughs> but he, he sounds like me sometimes. But he's <laughs> like ultra aggressive. But he's yeah. he's hilarious. But beyond anything else, he's informative. Like he's telling you, like, yo, bro, did we? That's why I, I was talking to my wife earlier about like where we are in this country and how people just bitch and moan about whatever people are dying. Like they want to build a wall, whatever, whatever side you stand on with that. People are climbing walls, going through tunnels, going through hoops, throwing their kids over that damn wall just to come to this country. Like this yeah. is, it's, it's a lottery ticket over here. And you know, a lot of our, us first generation Americans, we fuck it up bad. Like you don't have, you lose the immigrant mentality. Like, just to go on YouTube and do this and have a chance to make bread, this is just, yeah. you just got to have the, you, even if you're shy, get rid of your shyness on here. Like, you know. Yo, it's, it doesn't it's, make sense ins it. it's insane, bro. It's the American dream. Like, you can utilize. Like, I just think, like, all the tools that and technology that we have nowadays, you cannot tell me there's no way you can monetize what you do on a daily basis. There's people literally getting on the internet, just recording them, brushing their teeth, their morning routine, and have like fucking a million followers, man. It's insane. I'm that's no bullshit. Like people have gotten famous over just you know showing they every day going to work, their daily routine, man. It's ill, man. So yeah, like why not us? That was always our thing. Like, why not us? And I think that was that was my thinking going into January of 2021. Just, you know, we've been doing this. We want to do this podcast for three years. Like me, me and you, Ray, we, we met our brother Mel. He brought us together. You know what I'm saying? He thought he always had the vision like, yo, we should do a podcast. You know, came up with the name, put it in perspective. And we were like, cool. So, you know, our, st our origin story is you know we connected on the marco polo app i don't know if people are familiar with the marco polo app basically like uh the you know video walkie talkie app you send a message you go back and forth it's like a big group you can have many people as you want on there and we connected that way and we were basically what we're doing now the topics we talk about sports hip-hop whatever life you know finances all that stuff we were doing on the marco polo app the only thing was we wasn't putting out for the general public. Now, like, you know, we, we finally went forth with this platform and finally got our feet wet, got a little comfortable in front of a camera. You know, we put in, you know, our perspective out into the world. And three years, man, like, it felt forever. I just thought that if we didn't do it this year, we would have never probably did it. It was like three years too too long for me. That's and how you felt? Now yeah. Or now. now or never. <laughs> now or never, bro. That, you know what I mean? That's the model. Now or never. Like, if we don't do it now, it ain't going to never happen. And I'm just glad that we finally got this shit cracking, you know? And uh, it feels good, man. It feels good. I feel like a weakly trying to crack, trying to crack open this bottle. Yeah, that's how we started it, man. Um, I met Mel about nine years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. We were, we were working at the same location, and we were talking about doing podcasts then. It was just a matter of it wasn't this easy, even though we had, you know, cameras and everything. I don't remember people talking about StreamYard. I don't remember there being a YouTube live. So now it's just like this is the new social media. And me and Mel just got cool. We had a very, you know, similar, a similar mindset about life and just um at least being able to to converse about different things. Like me and Mel, the first thing we what made me even Continue a conversation with him. I always mention it is we we talked about Elon Musk and Tesla and to see where they are now is crazy. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I remember telling him like, he knew more about Tesla than I did, which was crazy because we were in this, you know, 
I was working for a city agency and just making nothing. You know, he, he's working security. You know, we're like, why would we know about this? So I didn't realize at the time how much of a hot topic it was or, or becoming. So, you know, I told him how I felt. Like, at first I was enamored with him, but now I think Elon Musk is just like, he's like Kanye, where he's just like a scam artist. <laughs> he's just, and I respect that. I, res I respect the scammer. He's making yeah. his money to invest in his in his in his stock, and he look what he did with um with Bitcoin and now Dogecoin. Nigga, that, man. <laughs> can we? <laughs> I'm mad about that because yeah, I lost I lost a few um I lost Lisa eh, not crazy I, I lost a few uh, dollars nah, over the weekend. It, nah, not for not to where it was. <laughs> It was at, where did it, it, it dropped to like 50 and then it went back up. It, it went to it was at like 71 cents on mm -hmm. was it Friday night, like going Friday and Saturday morning. And then you know, he went on SNL and then he did the skit on SNL. He was like, It's a scam. Once he said that shit, that shit went brrr, it went just plummeting. Yeah, it went down like 48 cents. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's 46. Oh, I didn't look. You know what? I didn't look at it today. Yeah, wow. I, lost, I lost I lost a few uh, dollars. <laughs> but it's all good. Well, um, you didn't lose anything because you didn't sell. Oh no, I sold some. <laughs> and your profit taken. Yeah. So that's oh, good. Uh, but no, nah, I mean I, I still I still got a a, a a very, very, very decent uh amount amount of shares. So I mean I ain't worried about it. Nothing crazy. Just but watch it. He was just what? surprised that I had that take on you almost. And I just felt like mm. his goal is to take over the like the green and, and the the energy. I didn't see him just being a car guy. He was trying to take like if you look at him, I guess we're veering. I'm veering off real quick, but if you look at what Elon uh -huh. Musk, was doing, he's he was trying to get. I think it was forty charging stations in, in the island of Manhattan in New York City. Manhattan has like 125 gas stations total, if that. So with really, 40, that's it. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, and it's probably way less than that. I might have the numbers wrong. But then he would talk about, you know, SpaceX. Initially, he didn't have um what's the joint that's inside the house? Because it's not Tesla, SpaceX, and I'm forgetting the sol solar, solar something that he would have it. He was trying to build like the solar panels in 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 on top of the houses and and uh retain the energy the the for the batteries mm -hmm. inside the house right but he eventually i think merged it or put it under the umbrella of tesla which is smart because that's what he was trying to do so he's gonna you're gonna be able to charge your car with him gotta charge your house electricity with him and you can you connect the two and because he opened up the bat the patent for the battery for the car mm -hmm. so not any, any car company can use that but he did that like nine years ago so he wants everyone to be able to, to use his batteries so that he, you can charge your car, even though you are Mercedes Benz, where are you going to charge your car at? It has to be yeah. at his station. So he saw that. And that's what makes him like a, a genius or ahead of his time. He's ahead of his time. He's a visionary. Yeah, he's a visionary because he's not even with the name Tesla. You would think that there was that was another thing that me and Mel would talk about with, with the Tesla and uh, Nikola Tesla and the, Nikola Tesla yeah. and the Thomas Edison argument that Thomas Edison. <sighs> Is looked at as a as a showman and as a as a charlatan, and Nikola Tesla is like again the Kanye of of scientists. Like he was a he's the term mad scientist comes from Nikola yeah. Tesla, right? So you would think Elon Musk is more Nikola Tesla, but if you look at his interviews, he will say I'm more Thomas Edison. I'm a showman. That that mad scientist shit ain't gonna make you no money, you know. And hence why he's in the first Iron Man. If the Iron Man Robert Downey Jr. is based on Elon Musk, or some of it is. So all these things, that's how me and Mel were going back and forth. Like, what do you mean? And from then it was just like, we would talk about everything. How, how I was, I love Patrice O'Neal back then. So that must have been, yeah. that meant Patrice O'Neal was alive. And then when he died, I was messed up over that. So he would talk about like, I would say like Kevin Hart really ain't that funny. Like he's just a star, but he ain't funny like that. And he was, and we would argue about that. And it was to the point where we would stay mad late at work and just, just talking. Talk yeah, and people will, will come around us and we would talk mad shit. People were leaving work on the way out. They would watch us. Some of them would stop and talk to us like, I got to go. So from then we were doing it. And I, that's when I'm, you know, me and that's how me and Mel got cool. And yeah. then I knew you about three years ago because he said, you know, yo, B is my man, B is when I want to start the podcast with. And we had a couple of other uh, candidates 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They may make some appearance, but but the people who were the most persistent, it got to be you and myself, always on the polo, going back and forth about everything. everything. We haven't and we haven't gone full fledged with that yet. Mel nah. is really the instigator. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like he's he's the um, he's the missing link. He's definitely the the link. You know what I mean between us. Um, yeah, man. Me and Mal, like shit. he's he's family for me. He's like he's like my brother, man. He's practically my brother. Um, I knew Mal since I knew Mal for years, for long since we was kids. I mean, we we didn't get close. We didn't really become like close friends until like the summer of '99. But I knew Mal. For years, like when we were single digits playing ball in the park, the park, the park in our neighborhood in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, and uh, you know he he lived up the block in the peas around there, and um, you know, and yeah, when we got in high school, we really became cool freshman year, and then he actually moved like right around the corner from my house, and his apartment building was like right in the behind my apartment building, so. You know, my backyard was essentially his backyard almost. So when we were out there in the back, like he would look out the window and he'd be like, Oh, B, what up, man? Like we knew each other from school. And then me and him became cool because he moved around the corner. And then after that, we just go to the court, play ball. He he hung up on hung on my block for like the whole summer '99. And that whole summer, it was just me and Mel. Like we were gonna play ball, we was gonna go get something to eat, you know, looking at girls or whatever, you know what I'm saying? We just it was doing it all, man. And ever since then. We've been inseparable. You know what I mean? It's like my brother from another. And um, yeah, man. Like, so fast forward a few years and he always wanted to do this podcast. He knew I always wanted to do a podcast. Just, you know what I mean? My passion about certain topics, especially hip hop or sports. Like He was like, yo, B, you'd be perfect to do this. And he always, he always told me I should do a podcast. A lot of other people told me I should always do one. It just never happened. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't in the cards, as they say. I mean, and I just, I guess as I got older, I just realized like, yo, I got to make those cards. I got to write those cards. I got to make those cards myself. And I just felt like with all, us coming together as a trio and us wanting to have an idea of trying to really do this, it was like now or never. And just everything with COVID last year, you know, I was being, I was home most of the year last year, just you know, from work. And, you know, you get a different perspective on life when you're away from a certain situation and you're like, yo, listen, like, yo, what are we doing? These not, this not a five shit. Ain't it like, yo, what happened to just, you know, following your dreams. And, you know, I know a lot of people say, don't get caught up in your dreams or your passions too much. And, you know, try to stay safe. But I just got tired of people controlling my destiny. I was like, I gotta, re I gotta write my own shit. I was like, if, if I don't do it, someone else is going to be writing it for me. And that was just my inspiration, like for us to finally just like, yo, let's do this. Whatever happens with this podcast, wherever it goes, just to say that we actually did this, we manifested it, is a blessing and it means everything to me. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, I'm happy we doing this together. You know what I mean? So we finally, this is where we at, and I'm happy where we at with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel the same way. Like 20 years from now, we just laugh. We're gonna laugh about it regardless. I think. Yes, yes, absolutely. Where we start is never where we're gonna end in. Right. You could use mad, even if you haven't done anything successful in your life. Just think about even if you're at the same job for 15 years, 20 years, think about where you started to where you, you know, where you're at right now. Yeah, absolutely. It ain't never too late. Plus, like I said, it's it's the immigrant mentality. Like that's that's why I don't understand, you know, certain with certain positions people take. I understand that, that there may be too many damn people in this country. Maybe over, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect. Overcr overcrowded. Yeah, it's, overcrowded. it's overcrowded everywhere, but New York, New York is crazy. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, it's it's you know what made the fabric of this country is a and nobody's from here. That's that's the bottom line, and it has to be constant recreation. There's the culture. We always used to look at every decade. What was the illest decade? 70s is bell bottoms and afros. 80s is graffiti, hip hop. Like '60s was was uh you know the um uh civil rights movement. 1950s yeah. was like was a uh, Korean War, and they talk about like the white picket fences with, with, with what do you call it uh my man that whistles uh, uh Don. Oh, he's talking about. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver and, and yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's Andy what I. Thought about. 
Yeah, and even <laughs> even even with the sixties, it was like this progressive movement with the Beatles. But before that, it was a leather jacket with James Dean. He represented that. Like, but there are pictures and and photos, and you know they lived that time. They create recreated that time. Every decade has its own culture almost. Absolutely. So the fact that like now we're in this social media era. People are just way too caught up in like bullshit. Like it feels like everybody's in a gang, and I ain't listen. I, I could tell a couple of stories about you know almost being in a gang or whatever. But it's like the reason why I never even got involved was because was because I'm not dying for for a stranger that <laughs> over nothing. Like I could see right. if we were like protecting our our neighborhood, our land, our family, you know, our children. Our, you know what I'm saying? But listen, I ain't get so social media feels like that now, and it's just like. You're, you're you're defending this land from like I just saw yo did you see Michael B Jordan's movie Which one On Amazon Prime the last one the latest one um No nah, I've been meaning to watch that it's it's on my list no nah, I haven't watched it yet I've been watching um I've been watching a lot of TV shows uh, catching up on shows I haven't watched any, too many movies um I've been watching yeah. uh I've been watching um City on the City on the Hill on Showtime with Kevin Bacon, it's pretty good. Been watching Kevin that. Bacon. Wow. Uh, but nah, fought, wait, so what's up with the Michael B. Jordan's? I, I, I know without, about it. I haven't seen it though. Without remorse, I was a little disgusted because my wife was way too into Michael Jordan all of a sudden. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, I can't personally, I think he was whack as Killmonger. I think he is not a good actor. He is okay. He's yeah. like, He's like the I don't want to disrespect him like that because he does a lot of great things too. Yeah. Like this, he's he's kind of Kevin Hardish at being a dramatic actor. Like, eh. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Yo, because you know what? I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, I'm not I a hater. He's not, uh, I mean, yeah, he's not the he's not the greatest actor. It's, right. Of course, it's the physique. You know the the roles he's he's picked. The Fruit Fruitville Station is probably what really launched him into like. I right, him getting all these roles because you know the movies before that the shows he was on the wire he was on um law and order a few times you know he was a child actor um i know he uh did the fantastic four movie which was a flop i mean he was in a lot of he's been he's been active for a long time but the point fruitville is station really okay. put him okay. put him so in a different so fruit fruitville station for him good point because fruitville station for him would be like what's seriously funny is for kevin hart because even though i don't think yeah. kevin hart is funny I think seriously funny is a classic. It's hilarious. It is a classic. Yeah. Yes. I think it's a classic. Like that, I can't deny him from that. And yeah. but my point is, I wouldn't, you couldn't really get me to watch a Michael B. Jordan movie. I I, I was yeah, me too. Longer. So <laughs> my man was hyping it up, and I'm like, this show better be fucking good. I'm watching it, and I can already see where they're trying to do with me. Like they, the, what the, the charades they're trying to play. And I'm like, okay, it's not as ill as advertised. Anybody who's saying that it's that ill. Oh, so damn. All right. Yeah, he, he, yeah listen, listen. Well, here's, thing, here's, here's the only reason why I brought it up. Yeah. Because I was talking about the division in this country and shit like that and why people are against each other. Oh, I can't give that away. Spoiler nah, alert. You can give it away. Nah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. the guy in the movie, the villain in the movie, ends up saying, Yo, we we basically we got tired of looking for a bad guy. Like we're the CIA, we're supposed to create the bad guy for you. It was Russia at one point, it's China. It was Al-Qaeda. It was this. It's no longer that. We're finding the bad guy in each other now. That's why we divided the country up and everybody's going against each other because we can't find an enemy anymore. The enemy is, is us now. And it was hmm. like, oh, shit. <laughs> is Michael B. Jordan trying to drop like the fucking jewels on us? <laughs> That's well, important. Whoever wrote the movie. <laughs> um, Tom Clancy wrote the book. It's a Tom Clancy novel. Yeah, Tom Clancy is usually good at the, those, you know, video games and, and the novels. And, yeah. yeah, and that was my thing with with Trump. Really into Trump, but that was my thing about Trump getting into office. Like, I don't be no dead horse. He, he's kind of done now, but I would think he is, and I think he's gonna catch a Fed charge. And you know, my thing was he should have just bowed out gracefully before he became president. But I didn't like that he was. He's too much of an opportunist. Like I know his fabric. He's from New York. Like, dude, you're not supposed to be. Sit the hell down, Donald. What are you doing? Nobody, like somebody should have slapped him. They should have handcuffed him. His man, somebody. But nah. my problem was, was that he would push the country to be div more divided and seek an opportunity in that. And we're not Syria. We're not Russia. And those right. those places around the world are divi severely divided. Well, severely, really. Like that. 
That's so a what, totally different. Yeah, that's a totally different what program, man. We divide and, con and conquer our own selves. That allows somebody to come in here and take us over. That's a real that's threat the, now. That's the that, well, that's that's, that's kind of the nature. That's the kind of nature of man. Right. Did you say it to me before? Like we get so we evolve so much to the point where you self destruct. I, no, but I'll take credit for it. <laughs> okay. But that, that's the thing. That's the theme, and um, I'm not sure if that's in. I don't know if it was scientists or whatever, but that's a thing where you can, like, you yourself or me myself, we have certain capabilities, and you can reach that point, and you yes. can see even with celebrities or whoever you deem successful, they got nowhere to go but down. So it's almost like they get consumed with like, yo, but what do I do next? And you self destruct. So it's the same thing with human beings, or the same thing with this country. Like, we can objectively see, like, I don't care who is telling you what. This country is way better than any other option around the world. Yes. Knock it off. We're online right now trying to make some money. Yes. Cheers. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait, wait. Why am I sitting here drinking coffee? When I just got me a little bottle of Patron here that I did not open. That's something small. Oh, ching the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, um, so what, do you, what do you feel about the vaccine? Can I ask you if you're taking the vaccine or we can edit this out? Oh, uh, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. We, can, we can build on that. It's, it's funny um, because, yeah, listen, I was hesitant to get it. You know, I was I was on the fence about it. But, um, you know, just me, I know later on this year, I plan on doing some things with my family. I'm like, yo, whatever, man. We got all these. We, we've been getting vaccines since we were babies. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally, you know, me all that, but come on, man. Listen, I, I got to do what's best for me and my family, myself. I caught COVID, so I'm like, nah, man. I, I just don't, I don't want to see people go through that. So, yeah, I actually, um, I set up an appointment for this week to um, actually get the vaccine. So, I signed up for the Moderna. So, I get my first uh, dose. This week, on, uh, yeah, this week, yeah. I yep. feel like, I feel like ODB circa ninety four when he said, "I call gonorrhea." <laughs> I, call gonorrhea. <laughs> I call gonorrhea two times, man. Yo, I call. I remember that on MTV. He was <laughs> yeah, in the back of a limo, going to yep. a food, pick up his food stamp. ODB, yep. top two realest rappers realest. ever, and he ain't realest. <laughs> um, so I call COVID twice. At least according to the doctor. Twice. And you know what's wild? You know what's crazy? Because my doctor said, Oh, you can't get it, you can't get it twice. I said, Really? I said, How? And I, and I heard people getting it twice. I'm like, mm, I don't know about all that. I, I have uh asthma, so I'm like, I can't really fuck around with this shit. Caught it once, you know. I really I went through definitely was feeling it in my chest, but not compared to a lot of other people I know that have asthma or just don't even have asthma, really were going through it with you know, as far as shortness of breath and breathing. I'm not taking that chance again. I'm trying to I'm trying to live a few more years. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna let COVID take me out. You know, I'm gonna do whatever I can to prevent it. So if this vaccine is gonna help prevent that, then fuck it. I was listening to your boy Vlad, Vlad TV. He was well, interviewing. Don't say my boy. <laughs> <laughs> he was listening, he was interviewing a TK Kirkman. That's a guilty pleasure now for listening to Vlad because you guys hate him so much. Um, he according to him, which is crazy. I'm getting my vaccination news from Vlad <laughs> TV. Yeah. But he said he, he said that um you're less likely to go. Yes, you can catch it. You're more likely to catch it after you get the vaccine. But you're less likely to end up in the hospital. Way less likely. So because of the you know you have the antibodies to fight it. But right. there's so many things they're saying. If you have to take the vaccine every year, same way you gotta take the flu. This is flu shot every year. I don't take the flu vaccine. I, I I haven't had a flu shot in years. So then, but. and initially, the 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 vaccine was you developed the antibodies when you caught COVID, right? And those antibodies were only around for four months, and then you were able, that's why you were able to recatch COVID. So that's why right. you can test to see if you have the antibodies. We might need to update this shit. I think we told me to go to CDC. 
the cdc.com <laughs> You did? Let's, so wait, all right. Let me get this straight. So, are you gonna go? Are you gonna get vaccinated? No comment. No comment. But you wanted me to comment on this shit. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> kind of, what kind of bait and switch shit was that? Um, <laughs> I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards it because um, it makes sense. It's just like everybody got. I got seen all the guinea pigs do it. Seen all the old folks, <laughs> and um, you know, give yourself a synthetic virus. Um, yeah, especially with uh black and brown people. Now, what if they? The, I think the conspiracy theory for oh, speaking of conspiracy, yo, we talking about that bill. We gotta do the Bill Gates talk. I'm not touching that. You can you can build on that if you want, <laughs> bro. But that's a part of this because that was the conspiracy early on. But that Bill Gates is gonna Thanos snap anybody who had uh, who doesn't have the vaccine, <laughs> and you're done. <laughs> You could re-release. <laughs> Yo, what? I, it's yeah. the first I'm hearing about this. I just made that up, okay. but yeah, <laughs> it, but because remember the original conspiracy theory when this first came out was that there's a list of people that are on that Jeffrey Epstein list. There's a list of people that were uh, associated with Jeffrey Epstein, and they're releasing the virus because they didn't want them out. So they were gonna announce this guy's dead. This guy got the vaccine. Meanwhile, they like uh Tom Hanks. They were saying Tom Hanks is, was in the, was in was in a, with Jeff Epstein. Okay, it's just a conspiracy. But Bill Gates was the leader of this thing, and he's also the guy that we saw four years ago. He was there. They okay. said at least seventeen times on that little little Lolita Island that Jeffrey Epstein had. Now, now, okay. him and his wife are getting divorced. Yes. Okay, did you read why? Possibly. No, why I did not. Because why? when the list of Jeffrey Epstein, the Jeffrey Epstein list came out, they had a beef. That is mm. so ever since then, if you're Bill Gates, one of the most powerful men in this damn world, owns 270,000 acres of New York of American farmland, by the way, the most of out of anybody, which is, shouldn't be surprising. No. The virus uh consultant, he's the Ebola. Uh, orchestra, <laughs> the Ebola, whatever wizard. He's dead center in the middle of this shit, and then you have things like uh, I mean, it's a bunch of foul shit. Once you got yo, he's powerful, bro. Yeah, even if like they're turning him, I always say they're turning him into like the Riddler in real time. He's like a real. <laughs> 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 nah, but nah, go ahead, keep going. I'm just saying that's where I'm at with it. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's true. So, <laughs> obviously, so because it is, you're hesitant. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I, I just told you. I, now I'm scared that he's gonna Thanos snap the people that don't have the vaccine because every. I'm pretty sure that he took the vaccine, and I'm pretty sure the most powerful people took the vaccine. And and at the end of the day, even if it's if you think it's not a conspiracy, it's still an experiment. If you're if you're if you're yeah. a scientist, it's an experiment. And by the yeah. way, um, it's still fuck Dr. Fauci and fuck the CDC and fuck who you guys messed up last year. He <laughs> he's part of the reason why I don't believe them. He should have never lied last year. He just didn't. He should have grabbed his little old Italian nuts and told Trump, "Hey, check this out, Donald." Uh. The doctors need a mask. You guys can't get a mask. We need our medical officials to be good. And I'm pretty sure, like, he couldn't imagine that if he spoke about this, all these billionaires and everybody would have got their shit together. He couldn't secretly call Mark Cuban or somebody and, like, get something together, like a little conspiracy thing. Like, I just don't believe that little... I don't believe him anymore. And I like him. <laughs> I like him. I like when he talks. He sounds reasonable. Yeah. But Yo, you know, it's, it's 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 crazy because it's almost like you have to be cynical about this shit. Like you gotta be a cynic. Like you gotta. I, I, yeah, listen, there's so much shit going on, so much surrounding this whole situation. Last year, we've never experienced anything like this. And out of all the conspiracy theories that we've had and heard in our lifetime, mm -hmm. this shit right here is like probably the, like, all right, this is this shit. This shit happened. COVID happened. So you knew you you knew it was so, it was going to be so many conspiracies that were going to be birthed from this actual event. Like all the times, like they tell us, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, things don't happen, and that shit, a pandemic actually took place. We're still in this shit, 
And if you're going to be a cynic about anything right now, so be it. This is this is this is the moment. This is the time. This is the this is the situation. So you want to get into that? Like how what? our era. Huh? To be honest, I'm I grew up. I'm Dominican, but I grew up with all, a lot of my homeboys are black. And they always told me, like, you know, you grow up with, all right, slavery is not the end of the story. We weren't, we weren't no damn indentured servants. You hear about Jim Crow. You hear about, yeah, you heard about uh, Martin Luther King. But what about Malcolm X? You know where he came from? And then the Black Panthers came from there. So you say, like, wait a minute. What? They fucking, like, still to this day, like, when my mother was alive, they were going after black people? And they're like, yeah. And then you find out the mob has, like, Jagger, Hoover, and Drag. And they say, yo, you better, you know. Yeah, we're good. And then they started focusing on Black Panthers. So they're still terrorizing Americans at yes. the end of the day. So grew, growing up thinking that, and then everyone had their hands on the hold of the pale horse. That's like the OG. Still the have it. <laughs> still have it. I had, bro, I can't tell you how many times I've had the physical or even the digital version. And how many times I've linked that book out to people and nev never got it back. <laughs> Matter of fact, our boy, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to call him out. Our boy, Justin, on Mind on Matters, he actually <laughs> has a copy of my shit from like 2005. But go ahead. <laughs> but even, even if, and those were like street uh, underground. And again, like I said, it was, it was, it was more like, of the black black people, you know, putting the myth out there. Everyone, every other like Dominicans, we're naturally cynical. We're like naturally paranoid people, and so we believe. Black people we, too. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, Dominicans are fucking black. So I was, I was about to say that, but go ahead. Yeah, and well, whatever. We're mixed. We're a mixed group out here. So, <laughs> but also, it, even if you, if you, even if you are educated and you go the academic route, um. The 1984 book by George Orwell and Animal Farm. Yes. yes. That's all like conspiracy talk as well. And even before all this shit was uh World the World War Z. No, nah, the, the War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. That wasn't George Orson Orwell. Wells. Orson, Orson Wells. Wells. I always confuse those two. Orson Wells, World War of the Worlds. That was a radio show, and everybody really thought that it messed people up, man. It messed the whole how, country up. <laughs> how, easily, how easily with with social media can that can happen at the snap of a yes. fucking bro? It's it's happening right. to the tenth power or to the hundredth power now. Like that's taking place. That radio show is taking place through social media every second as we speak. Someone's making a story or a conspiracy theory, and people are running with it, man. And people were falling for the, you know, for the bullshit. But I don't know how much of this shit out there is true. We don't know. That's that's the scary part. We don't know what's the truth or what's not. I mean, my thing is just try your best to do your research and, you know, gather as much information as you can on your own. But who's to say that whatever information you gather is the truth as well? So. That's a lot of I, shit. I, I, yeah, and that's the part where I guess as a there's certain people you gotta stay away from. Um yeah. <laughs> um and then it's funny because they'll be on some shit and then they would have told you some shit like five years ago, and it's really like you know, but they're wrong a hundred other times. So it's like, what do I believe from you, bro? <laughs> you <know? laughs> no, <look. laughs> but there are things in life that you do have to I think we're paranoid for a reason, like. Paranoia is real, and yes, absolutely. It, I think it got passed along in our DNA for the most part because I, I mean, I think just, about how we were living thousands of years ago. Yeah, Maybe, I mean, yeah. but bro, like again, like this. I mean, all right, I think you were onto something. I I ain't even mean to cut you, but like, yo, it's like, all right, I just think that's like just human nature. Like people just. But where does that come? Where does that instinct come from? Is it is it animal instincts that we just are paranoid about certain things, or is just our radars up? You know, so are we just conditioned that way? Like things are put in place for us to be become, you know, paranoid. Like I think there are certain people who are just smart and they and they react to others like like I think it became in order for something to be ingrained in your DNA like that, let's say the first Hundred people on Earth, you know, mm -hmm. the first like, twenty of them died going down the same route, and you saw you witnessed it, like going falling off the edge of this 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 mountain over here. You're not going on that mountain anymore. 
even right. if all of a sudden the the mountain grows a middle piece and you can walk over, you're gonna be hesitant until somebody has the balls to go over there. Like, I think that that would have to play a mental or again become a part of your DNA in some instance, and that sort of thing, or even walking into a certain forest and avoiding certain the the X factor of not, not coming back. Like, oh, last time Brandon went in there, he didn't come back, and neither did Maria. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think so. All these things get passed down. There weren't as many people back, you know, a hundred thousand years ago or whatever. Right. And it's it was just... a, I always talk about white people living in caves and and you know, they lost their eye color and their hair and their hair color, all that shit changed because and their skin color because they were in a cave. The conditions, so imagine, yeah. The conditions. So imagine what what they passed down as paranoia. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, and I guess with Africans, um. I don't know you're paranoid. Is it because when they get cold or some shit? Like when <laughs> Yo, it's listen, it's the past down trauma, man. Like from, yeah. from generation to generation, man. And a lot of people trying to break these uh these uh generational curses, you know, somewhat. And I think as a people, as races, you know, we're trying to break, especially black people, you know, what I mean Dominican people, like whoever, like. We all trying to break some type of curse or stigma that we have from just passed down from generation to generation. And it's it's you know, as much as people try, sometimes it can be hard, you know what I'm saying? And and some people don't even know why they think this the way that they do without even thinking about the things that probably just passed down to them genetically. And uh I mean that's that's why therapy is very good. <laughs> I think uh, I think every I think everybody needs to at least try therapy at least once or twice. You know what I'm saying? Like just to open up their mind or just you know look at things from a different perspective that they probably never did. And also work on choosing, trying to choose your own struggle. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. again, that's why I keep talk, talking about this country. Like uh, you could point to the bad in any situation. Of course, you know you could point to the to, to the worst outcome. What do you what do you see in the future as being good? Like the the result. If you if you're pessimistic about it, like more than likely, I don't want you around me. Cause yeah. like you're thinking negative, and and that's just not just spiritually, but I think that's logical. Yeah, no, nah, that's listen. I, me and you on the same page with that. Um, I don't want uh, yeah, I don't want no one who's a pessimist around me. Like I, I like yo, I want I want you to have a positive outlook. Like yo, let's do this. Like you know, I say something. Don't I mean l warn me? Like it's one thing to warn someone. Like yo, listen, this might happen. Prepare you for things that might you know might happen. But just being a negative, having a ne negative outlook on certain situations, or just wallowing in the situation. Like yo, well this is gonna happen. Well you are gonna do this and. I don't think we should do it. Like you just having that negative type of attitude, it's, it's hard to to move along or be around people like that in your cipher, man. So me, so, I try my best to keep keep that positive energy going, man. So that is, I mean, that would be like being that pessimistic is sort of paranoid too. You know what I mean? Like that negative, you're only thinking about like yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this like level of anxiety. And I think we're very much more open to this and talking about anxiety now, which is good in a sense, but it's also like you said, where is it? Where are what is where it is good therapy? You know, are you mm. supposed to stop at a certain point? Is it is it like medication? Is it like vitamins? Is it like food? Is it like fast food? Like what is it? Listen, I mean, I, well, I wouldn't even say fast food. Fast food is it's good for the moment, but it's not healthy long long term. Therapy. It's, it's it's sort of like that good cooked meal, I think. I mean, I, I actually personally, I can I can speak on it. I'm mean, you know I do see a therapist, um, and I think it's been I think it's been very therapeutic to have therapy. <laughs> um, it definitely it definitely helps out, man. Um, I think it opens your mind up to you know possibilities on how you are as a human, like the your conditioning, how you move, how you think. How you operate as a human on a day to day, like you know, reading your own body language, understanding why you do what you do, and I think a lot of people, especially black people, man, we have a lot of post traumatic stress, and that that's not that's not tapped into, or people just don't acknowledge it because they think a lot of the things that we go through 
are the norm. And a lot of the shit we do, we deal with on a daily basis is not normal. It's not normal at all. We just, we, we're products of the conditioning in the environment we in. And we thinking like, all right, this is how it's supposed to be. Nah. And I think a lot of these, a lot of our, our environments and a lot of the conditions that we in condition us to think and act and feel a certain way. Anxiety, stress, um, just, you know, having a negative outlook on certain situations, not thinking that things are going to turn in your favor or not thinking that you can't do something or just having the the mindset of like, God, uh, nothing's good is going to come from this. Like, I'm just going to be, you know, a product of my environment or just a product of whatever, you know, situation I'm in and then just not, not turning it into a positive, not trying to get out of that situation. And I think for me, therapy has been very beneficial. You know what I mean? Just changing my mindset and just seeing certain things that I never even thought about, you know, looking into. So. And uh, a lot of thoughts went through my mind when you said that. <laughs> Cause I I just you know I'm the, when we go to DR you see I see you know people who probably way more well not probably way more poor than in this country it's not even close right they they don't have they don't even have a bus ride away to this to any land any metropolitan to be a homeless somewhere right. and then try to make it you know they don't have that in DR and we just talked about being around the world I think poverty in general leads you to have certain PTSD. Yeah, you know, yeah. certain shit regardless. Right. So, but those people can actually, if they ever got a chance, like we talked about earlier, are dying to come over here. And if they do, I, I think the one thing that black that nobody really talks about enough with black people, and it's hard to get, I guess, white people because that's easy to say white people. Mm-hmm. But us to understand is, I think black people in this country have been working on trying to cultivate a culture and this unity that provides like this. You know the just this link, like like I said, like being Dominican, there are so many parts of my culture that's just not even questioned. You know what I mean? Like it's just a part of it, and I accept it, and it's not negative at all. Like I imagine, like I look at soul food, and I'm like, that's more considered black food, but it's a negative connotation to it. Like that was a scraps for slaves and shit. Like so, there's a lineage back to this this negativity. Yeah. And, that's something that I think a lot of white people I speak to and I go, you don't understand, like, if you're Italian, you go anywhere around the world and there's some pastas and pizza, like, or someone speaking Italian, you can link. You can link up based on, on that alone. And that's that's not just a link that was hundreds of years old. That's a link that's thousands of years old, period. And with, with uh, African-Americans, African-Americans are hundreds of years old. So yeah. what is that link? You know what I mean? What is that? What, what are you guys not celebrating what are african americans really well what are they linking i, back to? I mean f- far as soul food <laughs> i'm like yeah they it slave times they yeah they gave us the worst parts of the pig where's the scraps um but what came from that is the perseverance of trying to trying to make it trying to stay alive and from that became you know later on evolved into the soul food, making fried chicken, using the collard greens from the fields, using that, making that food our own, using it, making that food into something that was soul food, coming from the heart, using it to help us survive, to get through, and to pass down from generation to generation. Now, that link now, you go for, to a soul food spot, you know, it's an African American, like that's an African American's um, restaurant, like just, you know, just from that, that's the link. Same way a pizza or pasta, pasta, which really originally was made by Asian people. You know what I'm saying? Italians adapted that, but um, and the mafia, and the mafia. But you know what I'm saying? We 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 got we made we we made got they gave us lemons. We made lemonade. Like you know what I'm saying? You made you made do. You know what I'm saying? Like those that food got us to where we are now. Like to help us get through some shit. You know what I'm saying? So I guess my, my point is. It's still a link between, but to like uh, four hundred years, it's it's yeah. not there's nothing before that. So there's there's a missing. Link. It's just like not having your so, father. Yeah, I mean, but that, yeah, that we was culturally raped. You stripped from your country. You culturally right. raped. You raped of your your religions, your culture, your way of life, your customs, language. They taught us to, to speak a different language. They taught us something that wasn't ours. So we were forced to adapt and make things ours. 
make soul food, <laughs> make the worst parts of the pig. You know what I'm saying? Turn those things into something that was essentially now that's linked to us, that's ours now. Because we didn't have anything. A lot of people are lost. Like, we the lost tribe. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, this shit is real. You know what I mean? So. That's, to me, that's biblical, I think. Oh, yeah. That's, absolutely. Absolutely. To change And then to change the world with a lot of, like, even with hip-hop and rock and just music and culture in general. And then now we're seeing a lot more. That's why it is ill to see. Um a lot more ownership in the entertain on the entertainment side because yeah. the other ethnic groups they took they they took their equity and on the entertainment side for years. Yes. But again, yes. I think personally, yeah. the reason why they were able to do that so quickly in this country, and that's the part that you'll hear you'll hear you know white people say they don't understand why I can't get like black people in this country can't get it together, and it's like, bro, you, I mean, Italians had it bad and, and and Irish people had it bad to the point where they gave that's what the whole Columbus Day controversy came from, right? Like they apologized to Italian people for hanging the most people, lynching the most people on record in one day were Italians in this country. So they apologized with, with Columbus Day. That led to the, the recent um the recent controversy. Even though I agree with calling it just Italian Day. Like forget about calling it Indigenous Day. Yeah, you, you that's their apology. So but either way for me the reason why Italian people were able to stick together is because that culture never went anywhere. It never disappeared. Meanwhile, Africans can't were in this country. They weren't. Well, they weren't the well, only see, group brought well, here. See, this this is that's the problem because Africa is a con Africa is a continent, right? Made Western. up of what? How many countries? 52, 53 countries. Uh, Italy is a country. You know what I'm saying? So the culture is from one region, one place. Africa, we were so divided. We were just taken from that country, rip culturally, different dialects, different languages, different customs, different way of life from different countries all over around Africa, different regions. And we were just all brought here, and put into the Brazil, put into the islands, came to America, and then China. Our, our, uni our unification was our skin color. That was it. You know what I'm saying? And then trying to make do it with, with that like all right we don't we don't speak the same language people forget about that part like yo like yeah we came from africa but yeah i don't speak that same dialect from that country or this country like our customs are different we eat different foods we have different traditions yo black people as a whole we're just trying to make it right just trying to make it that's the right. crazy part that's like they never make and that's another thing they never right irish and, and italians <laughs> they don't they fought each other in this country yeah they didn't get yeah. long they didn't they beefed they the irish became oh yeah the, absolutely hell yeah nah, uh, hell especially yeah. in new york the irish were the cops and the italians but you know i don't know they were mobbed up and <laughs> and were they in sanitation <laughs> there's a discrimination show on the sanitation test this is a really controversial uh podcast blame it on the uh, but i mean we, we speaking i mean we speaking the truth man i mean i, I don't i don't see anything what we said to be yeah, controversial I, I, it is but what it I is. Think, I think that's what the these conversations need to be had. I don't care if you you white, you Irish, you Italian, you black. Well, I mean, these these are the conversations that need to be had amongst each other. Like people need to hear some of these comments. Like, even if you have a negative conversation, you know, negative outlook about this situation, it makes you feel uncomfortable, supposed to. You know what I'm saying? It's an uncomfortable situation, man, for, for black people, for Irish, for Italian, whoever. I don't think it should be uncomfortable. It shouldn't, but it is. It is. It, it just shouldn't. I think it when it gets brought up that way, and if you're gonna be confrontational about it, I think some yo, to be honest, I think MAGA really started because white people just wanted to say I'm white and I'm proud out loud without abuse. <laughs> that's a part of it. <laughs> I think that's the root of it. I, I don't I yeah, of course I mean, you're gonna say, Yeah, it gotta be because uh, everybody doesn't agree with the capital dudes. They go, Yeah, we're not them. You're gonna see. I I speak to him and go. I would nah. I wouldn't do that because that's just dumb. Of course not. Because the way it's is looked at right right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because they didn't realize that th that they were just like look look at Black Lives Matter, and now Antifa kind of whatever the the rumor is. Antifa tries to infiltrate them. Like I don't. I can see why people go. I'm not going to that. It, this might yeah. turn. I mean, crazy. I get it. But Did listen, you, I, you remember, the, remember? Hold on. Remember what? before when Don Lemon was still a piece of shit. And Talib Kweli checked him. Got on his ass. Hell yeah. Of course. He said, yo, I was out here for three days. You weren't out here. Oh, he, he had to what apologize. 
He had Don Lemon had to he had to he had to apologize. He did. He had to he retract was, that shit. But it's people like what? him that are part of CNN and and, they, and like the media is yeah. people keep saying the media is bad, but CNN who watches CNN? I do. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I would never watch CNN. Why not? That CNN is horrible. They are I watch Fox CNN. I watch I watch Fox News, Fox News too. I watch MSNBC. I'm watching Bill Maher. I even listen to Ben Shapiro, and he's a little prick. Like I wish listen. Ben, I, I used to love Bill Maher, man. Bill Maher, he <laughs> he got better. I don't know. He got better. Yes, because for a while I felt like he sold out, and he could, and he donated to Obama, and he kind of got like a little biased. And then he ever the last four, the last couple, the last year, I want to say, he's mm -hmm. been going off. Like, who cares if he called it a China virus? They called the um the the I didn't even know that Lyme disease was a was a neighborhood in Connecticut. Ebola is a is an is an area in at West Africa. You name it, the Spanish flu? What are we, the Spanish flu? So all he was saying was like, yo, what are we so sensitive about? And it took someone who's considered a leftist or even, you know, the left. No, nah, he's, yeah, he's. He's what? He could be in the middle at times. Yeah, he's definitely. Yeah, but I, the thing I I'm, agree with him, the only thing I'm, I, with Bill I'm, Maher, I'm neutral. I didn't, like, I didn't like how, you know, he used to go in really hard on, like, Islam. Yeah. Like, really, really go hard. But like, that's his really. Thing. He goes in, but again, he's an atheist. I get it exactly, and I, that's that's the thing I disagree with him about that because his belief is that most wars were were because of religion. And I'm like, we are looking for reasons to fight right now. It has nothing to do with religion. We will fight for for a piece of a yeah. hot dog. I seen re I seen religious uh, religion was religion. This movie, yeah, <laughs> which I actually like. I actually Sweet. like that movie. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. You, so you took Ben Affleck's uh, side on, and during that argument with um, when he was on Bill Marshall. You remember that? No, nah, I didn't see it. I didn't see you that. What you're saying, like Ben Affleck, is his guy Sam Harris, who looks a lot like Aaron Rodgers. And he was on Bill Marshall, and he wrote, he's like this. People started jumping on his dick, and I like Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is ill to me. I don't know why they call him a racist. I'm trying Jordan to figure Peterson. out why. Jordan Peele is white Canadian dude that just started talking some real man shit from Canada. And he just said, like, I forgot what the rule was in Canada that they were trying to pass. And he said, yo, you can't pass that law because people have the freedom of speech. You just can't do that. And that was and that's how he blew up in the last four or five years. Mm. He speaks okay. really well about a bunch of shit. I think Jamel Hill called him a racist and all type of shit. And I know he considers like one of the some of the smartest people on earth. If I'm not mistaken, the Ashkenazi Jews, but I think there's some credence to that. And fucking Einstein and a whole bunch of these dudes are from there, but different story. Um, Sam Harris was like in that was part of this this group, the in intellectual dark web. Eric Weinstein's in it. I think they got Ben Shapiro. They should kick Ben Shapiro out. He's too biased and a uh, puppet master to be to be a part of it. But Sam Harris was on Bill Maher's show, and he was just talking about like, yo, even though you have the extreme, these are extreme Muslims who are the terrorists. Yes. The people around them, the family members, anyone who is Islamic, they're okay with it in a sense. It's not like over here where you're that's shunning. Like, you're that's, shunning that's, 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 all that is is the same thing as us growing up in the hood and you know who the dealers are. You know the motherfuckers is pushing the poison to your people and you're saying what up to them every day. That's what he's saying. Uh, I'm I, I mean, listen. <laughs> You're not yeah, in that, that environment. Cool. What are you gonna What are you gonna do? What, I mean, most in most cases, like yeah, it's, it's easier to say like, "Yo, we gotta condemn them and get together." Like, yo, you got you still live here. You gotta worry about the consequences if you saying, "Yo, fuck these drug dealers or fuck these people," especially over there. You gotta deal with that. <laughs> these dudes are terrorists. What do you think they're gonna do? Yo, I mean, I'm just being real. Like, what do you think they're gonna do? Like, oh yeah, oh oh yeah, oh oh yeah, oh 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 yeah, yeah. oh you gonna tell on us? Oh yeah, hey, we got the bombs and shit. Yeah, excuse okay. me, white man. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Remedy do you have to get rid of this guy from my fucking block? Word, you gonna get rid of? Yo, that's a good point, dude. 
Yeah, you're right about that. I'm just being real, bro. You already know, like, son. But, I, but I've seen it. I see. We come on. We I grew mean, up. We you know we grew up, man. I've seen situations like that go wrong. <laughs> but you call the cops on the terror. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Name with the eyebrow. I don't. I don't want to. Was my man? <laughs> you have glasses. <laughs> Yo, we do this. We gotta have that dude pop up in the middle right here. <laughs> oh, hell, that's crazy. What's happening? <laughs> oh man, boy. No, listen. I mean, listen, man. It's that's a great point, man. I, I, but Ben Affleck, they were saying Ben Affleck was so roided up that he couldn't really get that. I like, you, you. That's racist to say this. Then the third time, Harris is just like, bro. It's it's this is what it is. It's it's in the Quran, like it's in the Quran, like that's what they believe in. You know what I mean? Like, what do you want me to do? And he just again, you shouldn't have been if you weren't that emotional about it. Look, you weren't emotional about it. You say, yo, bro, you put yourself in their shoes, and it was simple as, hmm, damn, you're right. <laughs> what, what I mean, can, I think bro? sometimes you gotta just simplify the situation, like just like, all right, what would you do? Like, all right, think about the situation. Mm. Right. I mean, right. yeah. Do the analysis in the situation. <laughs> and and so you from the country that bombs us all the time have the right answer. We're supposed to trust you. <laughs> well, these are my cousins. We've been beefing for thousands of years. I I think you know the devil, I'd rather deal with the devil I know. That's how it goes, right? I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather deal with the devil I know. So the one I don't yeah, know, like yes, yes. you. you know, the yeah. grass ain't always greener. Damn, that was a good fucking point, B. Yo, man, I mean, <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean, that's that's what it is for me. I mean, that's how I see it. Mm. Um. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> yeah. how, the, the how the hell did we get there? The way we normally do. <laughs> this was ill. This was ill. This was ill. Um. Yeah, we got to post this. I don't go fuck. We posting this shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so... Uh, your boy, Murder Mace. Are we doing it? Fuck it. Why not? Damn. Let me see if I'm ready. <laughs> Why not? Why the fuck not? What about it? What about it? What about it? Is it a classic? And I've had this argument on Twitter. It wasn't really an argument. I, I, you know what it was? It was just that I was... And you know what's great? I actually like the album. Because I played the shit out. I caught, I caught the bootleg cassette. I didn't buy it. But I went to Fulton Street. Got that cassette tape. This is 97, so cassette tapes were still shit. I had my Walkman or whatever. I had my radio in my room. I used to write the lyrics down, some of the songs on the, on the, um, the Harlem World album. The joint with... um. What was it? The Jungle Buster. It was a few joints. I just to write the lyrics down. Like, cause this is before we was just print, actually printing the lyrics out. It was like right, right before that started really taking off. Yahoo. And was yo, out. Co- huh? Yahoo was out and he had the, the worst lyric interpretation of all time. Yes. Yeah. You go on you go on you go in there like, what the fuck is this? They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So yeah. I I'd rather interpret it my damn self. So I used to write down a lot of the lyrics. That was one of those first albums. That album. And the Buster Rhymes Dangerous album, I recall writing the lyrics out to certain songs on those albums. But anyway, Homeworld had great singles. Feel So Good is one of my favorite hip hop songs of all time. Um, that is a classic song. Regardless of anybody like, oh, it's that shiny. Sh-? Nah, that shit is a classic. Feel So Good is a classic hip hop song. Um, Why Your Girl Looking At Me. Is it classic? Nah, I ain't gonna say it's classic. It's a good song. I love that song. That's Neptune's though, right? Yeah, I believe the Neptune's did that beat. Yep. Um, what else? What else is on there? Um, the train with total. No, yeah, with total. There's oh no, there's a song. The song with total is Tell Me What You Want. That you song want is classic. That song is hot. Yes. Without might, a doubt. Yes, it's a classic. I want to say that song is a classic. And it's another one. 24 hours to live. Classic. Classic. Okay. 
he got a couple of classic joints. I just after you told me about it, I don't know if I should play it now because they're gonna. Nah, let's not do that. <laughs> Yo, but to be honest, YouTube you is you can mute it, and I don't like because that takes too long for them to to pull up to um to re pop up uh, do whatever. But to be honest, the you the YouTube idea. So if they have a copyright, whoever owns the copyright, they just take all the advertising on it, and this ain't like a Harlem world. This ain't gonna give us enough buzz, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, we're fixing our other videos up so we can get our money just in case, but. Do you want to get money? That's the first song. That's with Kelly Price, who apparently I think she's super puff for not getting paid for whatever. Oh, I wow. like that. It, it, it's a good oh, song, but it's not like it didn't it didn't age that well for me. I play, listen, I played this whole album for the fact of this conversation. I had to play the album again. And a lot of these joints did not age well, bro. They sound they sound like 1997. Like, all right, I get it. I get why the song was made, but this shit ain't classic we know what the classics are i that's not a classic bro but you could say that about so uh, you could say a lot about, of songs you could say that about yes yeah you know, about but, all, a lot of biggie songs like which one respect no nah, i mean respect i didn't care for when they came out even on even on life after death those which songs, songs don't sound, you can't what do you mean it didn't it, like what songs? Day. Half the album. <laughs> how does that sound like 2021? What does that nah, mean? Nah, all right, listen, 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 listen. He all has right. how many? All right, on. wait, hold on, he hold on, hold on, many? hold on. Because, all right, listen, yeah, this songs that sound like, all right, for what it was at that time. But, bro, there's not songs that you can actually enjoy that's, like, timeless. Like, all right, yo, this song right here, like, we know why it's still classic. Like I know why it was dope, and I know why it's still dope. Some of these songs on this album, they were good for that time. I'm not bumping it like right now. I'm not listening to it, and I'm not enjoying it the same way I used to. There's songs on Biggie's album I can still enjoy. More so than the songs on this Harlem World album that are not singles. That's you. <laughs> I listen to it. This song, this album is not meant for... Whatever you're talking about, Biggie, I cannot, I might not be able to listen to that Biggie album with, with my wife. Okay. I can listen to it with you, but this so, album, I might listen to it with my wife. Or the my whole wife. album? Yes. It's a, yo, you know what's funny? Here, it's funny you say that because Feel So Good is the lead single or one of the singles. That's yes. what the album is for. He's the, this is a product of the shiny suit, whatever. This is, this is it. that. He, he did that to the, to the, to the utmost. Right. Okay. And Mace was copied so much because of this. Like we can't even deny his 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 uh. And you talk about his the interludes were whack. No, they were not. Yes, they, they were fucking were, bro. Get the fuck out of here, man. Oh, this, this the mad is... rapper shit it was okay. The white girl shit, the Beckys and all that that shit wasn't that dope, bro. It wasn't dope then. Your man that was on the train talking <laughs> shit about Mace. And all of a sudden you hear doom, doom. that shit is hilarious. The um jealous one. Well, yo, stop calling my girl, yo. Who's your yo? Who's your girl, B? Yo, you know she, yo, stop calling my girl. That shit is hilarious. Which led to that's not tell me what you want. Yo, I, you don't like to cheat on your song with Jay Z. That song is still dope uh, to me. I hate. I, I I was never a fan then. I didn't like it then. I still don't like That's, it. It's dope. It was a it was a formulaic '90s album, but I like it. The I Need to Be song with Monifa is ill. That sounds like you're eight. You feel like you're 16, 17 years old again. Everything about those lyrics. He's talking about going out with some girl. Oh, okay. He, All right. What about Love I, You So? Which one is that? <laughs> What is Love You So with Billy Lawrence? Yeah. How do you even remember that song? I don't know. Let me lower it. No. I never <laughs> liked that song. I never liked that okay. song. Okay. What about the journey with Lil' Kim and Puff? I like it. Will it die for you? Yes. Is it a classic? Is it is it is it something that you can enjoy still? Okay, so that's that's the argument. Is the class is the album a classic? 
Yes. <laughs> if, All right. if, you, if you gotta think about it, then no. I had to think about it. That song with eight ball MJG is dope. Like this, his album, like his formula was what Big did. It was just so this way with it because he wasn't like, what do you want from him? I'm 19 years old. I'm 19, 20 years old. I'm yeah, not even I, 25, 27. All these other rappers took that long to pop off. He popped off with this album. I'm Nas not. was 17 when he made Illmatic. I don't okay. want to hear shit. Uh, <laughs> Nas had Nas had all these producers around him. He had all those co-signs. Maze came from out of nowhere, 19 years old, under tough. He didn't come from out of nowhere, bro. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Get really? out of here, man. What do you mean? What, what do you mean from out of nowhere? This album ain't just drop. He had a buzz. In 1995, was... in 1995, there was no Mace. In 96, okay, in 96. Was the yeah. only you. Okay, but it took a while. It was still like he's still Whoa. one of the most. He had he came off of money mo problems. He came off out, out of no way out. Like yo, bro, he was Mace had a buzz. He okay. was somebody, bro. Murder Mace, mixtapes. That all still, that. it still, it still wasn't a build up. It still wasn't a build. Like, all right, Nas didn't have a build up either. So it was like, okay, I see what you're saying. It was, but it wasn't a build up like like Tupac. It wasn't a build up like Jay Z. It wasn't a build up like DMX. It wasn't a build up like all these other rappers who blew up at in their late to mid twenties. He blows up at nineteen. That's different. All right. Said, First of all, Jay Z didn't have a debut album until he was 26. Reasonable Doc came out in 96, right? That was his first album. Tupac's first album was it Strictly for My Niggas or Tupacalypse Now? It was Strictly for My Niggas. Right. What was the build up for that? No, there no, was no, no. build up. I'm not saying it's a build up to that album. I'm saying it's a build up to him okay. blowing up. There's no build up to Maze blowing up. What? It was a year. That's a year Whoa. time. 90 Man, only you yo, on yo, Ray Ray he That's was weird. on he was on Mo Money Mo Problems one of the biggest songs of 1997 mm -hmm. correct yeah he was on No Way Out been around the world he was on that song he was on the, the joint with Biggie on on 112's album Only, only You, you. That, yo, the, bro that's a build up people were anticipating Mace okay, people were anticipating this debut bro that took a year at 19 DMX. That's a buildup. At 19, Jay Z could not do that. They were Eminem at 19 could not do that. These rappers could not do that. Mace, bro, all, all those rappers, they this them situate their circumstances, their situations were way different than what Mace had. Jay Z Nobody. wasn't on no big songs before Reasonable Doubt. Eminem wasn't on no big songs before Slim Shady LP. Come on, bro, get the fuck bro, out of here. <laughs> Well, he's had a machine behind him, bro. It's that, and that's easy to say, but here's the question. Would you okay. have wanted to hear a 19-year-old Jay-Z on anything? No, we did not. We didn't want to hear Jay-Z at 19. We just didn't. Jay-Z was still off. selling drugs at 19, bro. I don't care what he was doing besides rapping. I'm talking about his rap skills at 19. We did it. Was, we would have just pressed fast forward. Who's the next guy up? That's how it was. Okay. That's not a lie. That's not a lie. Bro, that's not, 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 not See, no, no. See, now you're trying to flip. You, you're twisting shit because now you're trying to take points away from Jay-Z being 19 and comparing them to Mace at 19. That's no. My, so I can, compare, I can compare. I can compare. I can compare. I compare Mace to Nas then? Mace to Nas. You can do that. Why? Because Nas blew up. You just did. You said the matter came out. He was, Bro, what, 20? Their, their trajectories are totally different. That totally was, different. That's May fine. had a build up, bro. Jay Z didn't have no build up to reasonable doubt. It was like, I, it wasn't no like, yo, he was doing that shit on his own. He Mace had a machine behind him. Jay okay. and them niggas had to make their own label. Even if listen, Jay, I just said you didn't mention DMX either. DMX, I mentioned Eminem. None That's of the build up. Yes, but even with Eminem, with a he, there was it's not just a machine. He needed a producer behind him. You needed the right people behind you, and he, you also have to learn how to adjust as a rapper. Mace had it figured out at the, on the rap side at nineteen. He listened to whoever it was. He had it together. That's the whole point. That's a fact. He had he people behind him. Nineteen. He had people behind him. Okay. Yes, it does. It, okay, but the point is, is that. He's 19 and he does this. 
it's not a whack album by any stretch. I ain't say it was a whack album. It's not okay. a classic. All right, but you have enough people out there to say that it's a classic to go, is it a classic? Like, uh, if you got to question it, like you said, if you have to question this album being a classic, then it is. Because what other albums do you, you don't, you, I've never heard anyone have a conversation about hip hop. And I might be wrong. I've never, as far as I know, in like the Twitter, on Twitter space, amongst my people on the block, between even me, you and Mel, we've never brought up Harlem World when we talked about regards to classic albums. Never. Not one time have we ever, in the three years me and you known each other, three and change years, on Marco Polo, we have never mentioned fucking Harlem World at one time. When? I'm, and I would have said, I used to say it was a classic. I used to say SD, uh, Amron's first album was a classic. I, we used to Fresh love it that fire? much. We used to love it that much. I loved it, but I knew it wasn't a classic. Bro, it's I, the same thing, and this goes back to War Report. I love War Report, but I know it's not a classic. And that's where you slip up. That's not why I slip up. You crazy. That, Bro, and, you're not comparing the infamous Illmatic. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You fucking not. Yes you, are. yes, you are comparing the infamous and whatever other. We just said it. We call it Army Fatigue Rap. CNN's first album, War Report, is up there with everything. And Bullshit. Like, it's Bullshit. not. It's not. Mob Deep has better hits, but in terms of a whole album, that first album, that War Report album, is it is not better. It is not better than the infamous. You are have, smoking rocks. It doesn't have to be better. It all it has to do is be a classic. It made it. Bro, in, it was in, never. In it was never held in that regard. That's not true. That's not true. Once again, you if you need how many people do you need to call, consider it a classic if it's not even that popular of an album? That's not fair. Now I can it's see a, why you say now I can see, if you use that same argument for the May shit that was popular enough to go yo ain't enough for you out here to consider it a classic, bro. This this album sold five million records and it's only like five of you saying is a classic. Now I can see, I can see why you say about with about those, the with those singles on that album. Yes, he was gonna sell. Mace, Mace was gonna sell what he sold. You know what I'm saying? That like, that was gonna happen. The singles, that's what keeps the cash registers ringing. That's gonna that's gonna sell you your album. Right. But a lot of the a lot of the other cuts on this album. That's bro. okay. That's fine. But what I'm saying is, there's not for you the percentage of people that listen to this album that were able to consume it. Ain't enough of them calling it a classic for you to be like this. This is a classic. It's just not for the war report. I want to say damn near eight, nine out of ten people that listen to it call it a classic. Nah, I've never bro, heard bro you're like, not comp I'm, listen, listen. It's a cult class. It's a, it's a New York classic album. I love that album. I what love else? it. I love it. I know the lyrics. I know it. But what else is it, is it supposed to be? It's a New York album. It's, it's, it's not a classic rock. album. It's not. You're not comparing. All right, listen. You're not talking about. It's not in the same. It's not in the same conversation as a doggy style. It's not the same conversation as the ill man. It's not the same conversation as the infamous. Yeah, you can compare it because of where they came from and how the album is. And yeah, use army fatigue rap or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's a street album. Like, yo, if you if you were you you were in New York City at that time, like TONY, that was the shit. But it's not, bro, it's not up there with the infamous Illmatic, only built for Cuba links. None of it, bro, it's not, bro. It's not. The only reason, and that's another thing. All those other albums had a great producer on behind it. The War Report doesn't have that that genius producer behind it, and it's still yeah. Tra what I mean, tragedy's not havoc, and he's not RZA, and he's not Dr. Dre. He's not Puff. So, so all right. So, so okay. So, what are you saying? So what, I, what I was what I'm saying is they didn't have that, and it's still considered a classic. Nah, bro. You're gonna First find all, Capone, like, Capone was locked up most of the time. He was hardly on the album. He's three songs. So Nori had to carry a lot of that weight. Right. Okay. But that album's not a classic, bro. It's not. You're the you're one out of your let's say let's say it's two out of ten. I say eight out of ten people who like the rule who listen to because everybody don't listen to that shit. So you know what? <laughs> if you want to go by that, go post a poll up <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> I don't we'll have any, I don't have enough of a following. So then I'll do it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'll do it. It's a cult class. It's a cult classic, bro. It's, it's a I, cult classic. It's culturally the culture in New York City that we grew up on. Like, yeah, like you could say that. But outside of New York, 
The war report is not considered, it's not held in the regards of, as the infamous outside of New York. It's not. I don't know about that. And, and I know reason, about that. Okay, I'm telling okay. you. Oh, but again, okay. you have Havoc and you have these producers that were able to make a song that made that expanded Bro. the listeners or the viewers or whatever of that album. The war Yo, listen, I don't care who produced what. If the if the shit is dope, it's dope. It's dope. It, it that shit. Listen, it was joints on there. That's ill. That I love that. Did near and dear to my motherfucking heart. The body of work overall from the beginning to end is not a classic. How many classic songs you think is on the, if uh, it was on on War Report? How many songs on there? Fourteen. <laughs> I mean, I can name I can name two that are like yo, like this is like I don't care who you are, like outside of New York, this is a classic. It is timeless. Two of them. That shit makes me. That shit makes me want to get the entire album. Makes me want to get a forty ounce from any liquor store. Bro, I love. Uh, it's not, listen, I love that album. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has, it has a very, it has a lot of meaning for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, the had, album. The yeah, album, album. album makes me want to cop <laughs> army fatigue pants and Tim's in, in 90 degree weather in, in fucking New York City. And, Yo. And, and with a hoodie. <laughs> 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 Yo. I mean, I mean, you know what? Even if even if it's not 10 out of 10 out of 10 songs, it's not the Illmatic. Infamous is not Illmatic. Where you guys make nah, this? It's, shit? it's it's not it's it's not Illmatic. No, a lot. There's so no it's, album like Illmatic. It's it's yeah. That's Ill, All right, let's not even say Illmatic. Let's let's just say whatever other album besides Illmatic you consider a hip hop classic. Like this is the consensus classic. Like I don't care if you're from New York, you from Cali, you from down south, Midwest, whatever. Like yo, you know Doggy Style is a classic. I don't care. We were playing that shit in New York. My mom bought that album first week. We were playing Doggy Style. Doggy Style was. A classic, but I'm again. See, and that was my point before. Do okay. you know of e, of any E40 classics? Any two short classics? They the cult class. They the classics in their region. Like, cause the, I, I motherfucking mother motherfucker from Oakland from the Bay would tell you, like, yo, E40 got classics. A nigga in New York or in Florida would tell you different. Okay, then. So then. You're not qualified to ever consider E40's albums not a I'm classic. I'm from New York. I'm from New York City, Ray. I'm qualified to tell you that the War Report is not a classic. <laughs> All right, that point. That point was you won that one. You got you got that point. So yo, like yo, listen. I love the album, son. I love the album, bro. And Bloody Money, the first Bloody Money, is my favorite. That and T-O-N-Y are the those are the two standout classes. And then of course, you know, got the controversy with LA LA. Um, but yo, Iraq see the world is my shit. That one, that one makes me uh that that's that's that one is near and dead right there. Um, what else? Halfway thugs, illegal life. Like, yo, was, psh, listen, right. I love the album. I love the album, bro. One, right, see live the world. long, live long. Yeah, right. That's one. I'd rather see the world, the world, see I'd right. Yo, son, Yo, I, 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 can't, I, I gotta be real with you, son. Nah, like, nah, nah, nah. You are disrespectful. Knock nah, it off, son. Knock it off. Enough <laughs> of your bullshit, bro. <laughs> I can understand your Harlem World beef. You're not gonna run into eight out of ten people that listen to All right, it. So, so what album do you prefer to listen to? <laughs> Harlem World or the War Report? <laughs> <laughs> you don't gotta answer that. <laughs> they totally two different albums, man. It's two that's two different moves. Cause one makes you want to go put your fatigues on, go rob something, drink a 40 on the bench. The other one makes you want to go get bitches, get fly. I'm, yeah, hang I'm, old, out. I'm older it. now. I'm older now. I can't even have that with the kids. I can't play that album around my son or my daughter right now. <laughs> Parole so, violated. Fugitives on the run, son. Live by the gun, son. Die by the gun, son. <laughs> they don't even have a uh, havoc. What he said, he did the drums, and that was it. Yeah. Listen, that was it's still an incredible effort by you know Queens all day. By the way, it's still you incredible effort. They kept the um. They were anti shiny suit before everybody else. They set the tone. Yes. They 
they yes. changed the momentum. They changed the momentum. So, you know, yeah. are we done with we, that? Yeah, we done with that. So, so Harlem World, <laughs> Harlem World is not a classic. No, <laughs> that's not a classic. Okay, all right, moving on. <laughs> oh, that was that was funny. <laughs> Any other we, spirited topics? I don't. I'm not. I'm not spirited about the one with the Jay Z and, and Nas uh, features. I got like. You got tw- tw- twenty seconds of my commentary on that. Oh my god! I mean, we don't have to talk about that. I think we we spoke enough on it on the on the IG live. But if, if you want to do it for the sake of the podcast, no, nah, no, nah. that's I'm fine. Good. So <laughs> well, I'm gonna say it anyway. I have the five <laughs> Jay Z and Nas. So. Whoa, whoa I, I do have. Wait, wait, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Number five is probably wait, the wait. worst one they have together. Is BBC from Magna Carta. Pause on the name. It's Billionaire Boys Club, not what you, what, you, <laughs> what everyone else thinks. Like, yo, what the fuck? BBC? What the fuck out of here? <laughs> Jay was wilding. Um, it's my least favorite Jay Z album, Magna Carta. Um, there's some gems on there, but that Jay Jay killed his verse, but it just they said Jay said that was the most fun he did doing a record in a long time. Because it was it was Nas, Jay, Justin Timberlake, Timberland, Pharrell, and Swiss Beats all in the studio. They're all on the hook, and then Beyonce's in there. They were just having fun doing that record, but it's not the greatest <laughs> Jay-Z and Nas feature. That's number five. Number four, and I have flip-flopped, because Friday I had said something different number four. I actually had Sorry Not Sorry at number four, that's the new joint they had on Khaled album. I actually got, I did, I, I do it for hip hop as number four with Ludacris. Nas kills it. Nas kills it. Luda kills it. I didn't like the Jay Z verse. I know he was paying homage to um, MC Shan and just old school rap. I get it. You know, he paid homage to Kaz and all those guys, but it just, it, it felt, it felt underwhelming. I don't, I don't know. It just felt weird as a song to me. Even then, I mean, I was happy they did it because it's Jay Z and Nas on a on a record at that time. It was dope, but yeah, that's number four. Number three, I just said it. Sorry, not sorry. Basically, it's Jay and Nas. Both of these dudes, multi millionaires, billionaires, angel investors. They're they're basically on this track on a, over a lush beat. Wasn't the, the biggest fan of the beat, but they're just talking about the spoils of their riches, or the spoils of their success. It's crazy that we talking about Jay-Z and Nas all this time from back then, from the 90s till now. These dudes are still relevant. They're still doing it. Even though they, they probably took a step back lyrically to some people, they're still better than most of the people that are still spitting right now. Um, So, yeah, this track, I got it at number three. Um, It was it was, it was was a few ill lines, but it wasn't the craziest uh, lyrical spot. They were just basically sitting back. With some laid back shit, you know. What I mean, you know, talking about you know their current situations. Um, number two, man, it, number two and number one, they they can they can go flip flop. They can flip flop. Number two, I got, I got success in number two, and and it was crazy. Success is probably their best song. Success is probably their best song together. The best beat they probably rapped on together. Um, I think I said the chemistry, not really. I mean, just I just thought that that one came out after Black Republicans, and it wasn't like it was anticipated, like it came out with American or American Gangster. Like, Jay just put it out there, like it wasn't like, yo, I got a Nas feature on this album. And we were like, oh, it's gonna be another Nas and Jay Z feature, so the hype wasn't there like it was, and I just felt like it just felt more authentic than how maybe the hype of Black Republicans was. But success was ill, man. Both Jay and Nas just killing it over that beat, over that no ID beat. Um, I even I love that Nas like takes a dig at Jay <laughs> on the track. I mean, it's not really a dig, but it's like, yo, it's, it's the situation. Oh, uh, worst enemies, you know, best friends want to be enemies. Like that's what sin. Worst enemies want to be um my best friends. Best friends want to be enemies. Like that's what sin. 
I don't give a fuck. Walk inside the lion's den. You know, like, that shit was ill to me. Like, he said, and the J has the sarcastic laugh at the end of the verse. So I got that number two. And then number one, black Republicans. As much as people, a lot of people don't like black Republicans because of the hype, because that was the first time after they squashed the beef, the hype was much higher than what the song was. And I think people's expectations was just the ball was set so high. So whatever they were going to do, it had to live up to everyone's expectations. And it didn't. A lot of people were disappointed with it. I think Jay and Niles both killed it. Jay obviously talking about the Haven on his verse, talking about something real, the situation, dudes hustling in the street and money getting between friends and, you know, just things that happen, you know, you know, with dudes hustling in the street. Nas' point of view is from the kid from the street, from the hustlers, overcoming the odds, making money, you know. So I got that number one. So that's my uh, J and Nas top five. Yeah. You don't have, you don't have, uh, didn't they do We Major? Nah, that's just Kanye and Nas. Okay, I thought they did a remix. Nah, they so, there's one song that they there's two songs that they actually own together, but it's not like they actually own it. Like they had they had the joint back in the day with on on um was the um Lord Tariq album. Lord Tariq had a solo album, the joint called um what's the name of the song? Damn. And Jay and Nas both spit, but they were <laughs> caught. Yeah, they they weren't in the studio when they did it. Jay has a verse. I have um usual. Was, was, oh man, so I, I have that, it. I thought that what? didn't come out. It came out. Oh, so then I heard and I just like deleted it from um. We, we yeah, back. that was yeah. Lord Tariq joint. Um, we, uh, Lime Wire. Um, yeah, Lime, yeah, that's when Lime Wire was popping. <laughs> it was but, uh, that yeah. A- they had that, and then they had the um. You joined with Jeezy. Uh, my president is black. Nas is on original, and then they had the remix with Jay. I mean, but it's not official. But yeah, they Jeezy did put both verses on there. But uh, yeah. Other than the that, last, yeah. The last time we heard, um, we talked about this before because uh, it was when Jay Z dropped with Nipsey, and then Nas had the EPMD song, which I think might be better than nah. the Jay-Z song. I like the B better. Um, but we were, but what we did say that night was like, yo, they got to drop an EP, and yeah. they're probably they're probably laughing at anyone who thinks that Jay Z is trying to like smudge Nas's um what you call it? Shit. his uh I don't think it's stupid. I think there is credence to it. I think why Jay-Z, why, why so? Because Jay Z's a petty now dude. still no within the last fifteen years. I think there was there was credence to that. All right. I mean, I could go through the timeline of the bullshit that people said. Oh, he dropped on the same day again. The no. Lion motherfuckers considered Beyonce and Disney dropping the Lion King and them putting out the soundtrack, the GIF, which Jay Z had one verse on, as people taken away from Nas's hype. Right. No, no. By then it was it was. I think Jay Z kind of done with that. Yeah. Um, but we did want to hear them. There was there had to be a time period when he was doing that, and it started with the uh, with the uh, MTV thing, unplugged. Same unplugged day. dropped the same day as um Stillmatic. Okay, so it started with that, but it still it would it had to have ended because they ended the beef, and I think they were they had to be over it because they're both um millionaires, billionaires apparently. Nas, we don't even know what he is, and it's even with the dig with um. I don't know if this guy MC Search has a beef with Jay Z or what, but he com- he reconfirmed the whole thing. He would, yeah, he, he don't like Jay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, just I mean, just me looking at it like just because I've seen him on two interviews, just the vitriol. Like this, he's mad at that situation, that line that Jay said, but the way he talks about the situation, he sounds very pissed off still. So it, you know what? Now that you say that, I can see why. Because for that line to be that line, it's like, yo, you, you saying that I fucked over a black dude. And he and he specifically says that. He said, you're saying another Jew fucked over another black guy, and I never wanted to be that guy. And I, maybe he does feel a certain way. But I think that's just a simple conversation. Because he, he doesn't sound, you know, but it's still, you, you, he's almost 50 years old. Talking about it that way, it was like, maybe it's drink champs. Maybe he was drunk. He's a lot, he's a lot of stuff like that. But, yeah, Absolutely. 
But either way, I think they could laugh about that with Nas saying I own a piece of your um, publishing. They could laugh about that they're both probably going to be involved with a whole bunch of investments, man. Like yes, that that relationship, and it's funny because nobody liked that Drink Champs Nas episode, and no. tragedy when tragedy was on Drink Champs, he pointed it out. He's like, "Yo, I would have asked him. I would have asked him, how did you meet Ben Horowitz?" That's exactly what I would ask Nas. What was that like? Like, do you realize? Did you realize what that was when you met him? He probably say no, but I just want to know. Like, you know, like Ben Horowitz is part of the founders of Andreessen Horowitz, and part of the reason why he went into this Coinbase thing. So, the fact that he's involved in all this shit is crazy. The fact that him and Nas are probably the two best rappers alive, and two yeah. best rappers of all time, according to you. And yes. I would have, you know, probably bumped them up now. Um. So if the album did come out, would we want to hear this fantastic? Because I really wasn't impressed by the song. I thought Nas was okay. I thought his flow wasn't as fluid. Jay Z sounded more fluid to me. But even then, it's like I never really care when Nas talks that that hype shit like that. Like uh, I like his storytelling ability. And I mean, that's one of his strengths. Yes, his superpower. If yeah. they. But I, I would, I would be. It would, they would go on the interest from us. Like the kids ain't gonna care. They just not gonna. Yeah, care. they're not gonna care. Yeah, I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Listen, and and yo, not even just the kids. It's people our age or above. They just based off the body of work, the five songs that they actually did together. People are like, oh, I don't want to hear this. They don't have no chemistry. Like I just don't want to hear a whole album with them. And there's people are just. Pure Nas fans like fuck Jay Z still. But then it's Jay Z fans like fuck Nas, and it, I'm like yo, I'm like yo, as a fan of hip hop, as a fan of hip hop, you cannot tell me you're not gonna sit there and listen to this album. You gotta listen to the album. I don't care who you are, you're gonna play that album. You ain't gonna, you can't sit there and be like, nah, I ain't gonna fuck with that Jay and Nas shit if they put out something. But you, how you, many? How what? many people even say shit like that as a fan of hip hop? You'd be what? surprised, bro. How old are they? They're like our age and older, okay. I, I, bro. Look at look at the timeline. Like go 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 search Jay Z and Oz album. And Hit Boy had uh kind of sparked it. I mean, besides the song coming out, them doing the, you know the, the Cali joint, Hit Boy kind of uh kind of um like sparked that. Like, yo, would y'all want to see a, a Jay Z and Oz album? And people went crazy, went viral. It's just people were like, "Oh, nah, I don't want to see that." Like, yo, what they had, I don't, I don't want to hear them. Got no chemistry. I don't want to hear a whole album or EP with them. I, I, I can agree to that. I think that chemistry is, or because you know what it is with them both, they mm -hmm. both try to be way too cool, too cool you, for school. Yeah, you can see them when when the, the Khaled. I like that. Nah, said like, "Yo, I heard your verse. I had to change mine, whatever." But it was still like Jay. Yo, Gilly the Kid broke down Jay Z the, the the most hilarious way. He goes, I I could I could look like Jay Z in every picture. You just gotta act like you you don't want to be there. <laughs> that is yo, every that's Jay -Z. That, yeah. <laughs> it's real though. <laughs> but Nas, they both have that same. Nas is just so much more low key yeah. that you don't realize it, and he he's not out in the public as much at he's all. Always he's always been like that though. Nah, right. Oh, right, yes. right, but both of those styles, like that's why a Jay, uh, Jay Z and Biggie album makes sense because you have two different, two different styles. You know what I mean? Yeah. A, now, Pac, a Pac and Nas album would have been crazy because it's both I, I, one, is loud, yeah. one is laid back. But when they're both laid back, it's like this is gonna be boring. Yeah, I, I would hope, and you know, just for the sake of me being a fan, I would hope that they hear all this talk because people, a lot of people think they can't do it. Cause like the chemistry, that's the being the biggest factor. I think if they really wanted to fucking do this shit, they will fucking murder this shit. Like just for the sake, like yo, we we done everything. We can record any type of album we want. We can experiment any type of album we want to do at this point in career. Who's gonna say what we done? Did it all as solo artists. We've done collab albums with other people for the, just the sake of like yo, fuck this. We're gonna do this shit. Just put that shit out there, man. Put it out there. Like, I mean, I, what? I'll listen to it. I'll listen to it. I don't I don't know. I went I went back to the Nas album because it was, you know, Grammy nominated and everything, but 
I don't listen like like I said, the four 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 album. I do not listen to. I don't like none of this. The last, and you know what? I forgot who just said. I think it was no MC Search said it again. He's on Dream Champs. Any once you're past thirty years old, you tend not to listen to new things. It's only like two percent of the people that are above thirty that listen to like you might listen to the new stuff. Me, all everything I listen to is nostalgic. Oh damn yeah. man. No, and you know what? I get it. Cause I know, trust me, I, I'm I'm that way too. But I, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, cause I try to see like, all right, I see everyone talking about this shit. Like, what are they? Like, let me see what the buzz is about. Like, you know, what I mean, I hear about Conway and his albums, and you know, Griselda always dropping all these albums and stuff like that. You got dudes like Mad Kami, and it's a lot of there's a lot of artists that you know been dropping shit lately. And it's like, yo, the shit is ill, but it's like, I'm not bumping it, like. Like I, I'm not playing this shit every day. Like I, I don't see what everyone else is or hear what everyone else is hearing. Like I hear it and it sounds ill, but I'm like, is it I don't know if my is it my intention spin or it's just like this shit ain't what the shit I'm used to. Like th this ain't the the shit like yo, this album's like, oh I gotta play this every day. Like it's some J Big and Nas shit. Like I just it's not the same for me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just old. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. It's like we. It's like what are they? It's like they trying to redo whatever they they like. They would cryptocurrency Scarface is like, all right. It was nigga. Cool. You just said that shit was ill. Other than I'm, I'm in between. I'm just like <laughs> you. You said that shit was. You said you like that shit Friday, bro. <laughs> I don't know if I like it. I like. I like. I'll tell you, all right. I didn't get my but take on it. No, but you know what? That's fine because. You're human, like yeah, you're, you're allowed to, like you know what, day to day, like all right, you know what, Friday I felt that way, but you know it's fucking Monday. I don't fuck it. It's all right. <laughs> no, I'd rather you call me out. Don't do that. Don't please. No, don't, but no, no, no. But see, but nah, I'm not. It's, I'm not. I'm not trying to, to to cater to you. I'm just letting you know that fucking that shit happens because you can feel a certain way about certain music or certain piece of art one day. And then fucking shit happens within that two day span or whatever weekend. You like, yo, you know what? Uh, it's all right. Yeah. yeah. I think I like Jay Z, but especially you know what line I the line has probably overlooked is kill. We say kill a god, you create a religion unexpectedly. Yo, that line is crazy. Yeah, that was like, oh okay. I I like Jay's verse better on that on that song, and I like Jay's verse on most of their collaborations. I want to see. I don't know if Nas got the one up on any one of them, in my opinion. Uh, I used to think that Nas got Jay on success. And then I, I said that on Twitter, and the whole Vengeance, my peoples, <laughs> it came from. <laughs> no, no, no. Jay Z. Yeah, Jay, my... But then, I, yeah, I'm like, yo, nah, Jay killed that. Because then, like, my, my favorite line is uh, In broad daylight, I'll off your own switch. You're not too bright. Good night. Long kiss. Bye bye. My reply. Blah, blah. Blast burning and pass burning and ta ta. Like, nigga, what? And then he incorporated the scene in American Gangster when Denzel killed Idris Elba. Like, because he asked for the change or whatever. That shit was ill. I'm like, all right. Yeah. All right. That's enough, Jay Z love. Uh, <laughs> He's a fucking hater. I'm not a hater. I just hate the whole Vengeance shit. It's disgusting. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know anybody like Nas like that. It's crazy. Nah, niggas, what? Yo, son, listen, like, let me tell you something. It, here we go. All right, I'm Nas done. Nas right. is Nas oh. is a god to certain people, especially people that don't like Jay-Z. <laughs> you know what it is? It's, it's weird because it's like, yo, if you don't like, if you're anti-Jay-Z or if you're anti, like, Mace or just that pretty boy rap or there's, like, that flashy shit, you usually get, gravitate towards Nas. And it, I don't know. It's, it's weird. I'm not saying everyone's like that, but it's a big distinction. Like, all right, it's a good chance that if you're a Nas fan, you know, there's a certain amount of certain different certain artists you like more than other artists. And certain people fall into that category. And I see it a lot, especially online, especially in the online chat rooms, man, especially social media. For me, again, it's, it's Jay Z makes easier music to listen to, and that's intentional. And Nas obviously was trying to be experimental, mm -hmm. and he still got classics and everything. He's a just beyond a legend, one of the best uh, musicians of all time. Absolutely, but, absolutely. But it's it's 
you know, it's still like I can't listen to like my daughter might not. I, if she gets into rap, then I can play it for her and my son. Mm-hmm. But I can't. My family ain't. But Jay Z songs are he he has that many classic, family friendly or just eventful songs that you can yeah you can everyone can listen to. They they hits. I don't know if Nas has that many. And, and even though I might like as many Nas songs as Jay Z songs, possibly. Yeah. But it, it's you know, I get it. I gotta go. <laughs> okay, yo, this is this is this is ill. This is a uh, um, a spare the moment <laughs> put together, put in perspective podcast. We did this shit on the fly. This shit was not planned. We just said fuck it. We did it. And we did it. All right, we did it, Raymond. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yo, that's the Patron talking. Yo. Oh, I forgot you were drinking. Yes, sir. Signing off. It's your boy, b Mad. Another one in the books. My brother from another. Raimundo Telemundo. Hit your SAP button. This is Put In Perspective. Hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Please hit our link tree. We on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts. Check us on IG, please. Show love, and we'll show love back. (laughs) Peace and love to everybody, man.